Hi guys and welcome to Rootstem. Um, camera's in a different position from now on, <laughs> I think. Um, this is a red gobbo tutorial. I'm going to be basically painting the red gobbo in stages, very much similar to what I did if you want to look way back when. Might have been last year. Yeah, uh, when I did the uh, Mighty Noise Marine. Um, we're going to be using airbrush techniques, we may even use some contrast paint, uh, some normal paint and of course we've already sprayed our lovely pieces. I've kept the head, legs, the coat has actually been glued together. Now in the manual it does tell you to stick the legs to the coat first but if you dry fit them they actually do, that would still fit inside there. I've got the backpacks, the Santa sack as it were, separate. And of course, I've got the base. The base has been sprayed black. This lot has been sprayed with sear grey. And I know that's a contrast undercoat, but I'm going to be using that for our main actual colours. Uh, some areas are not going to be airbrushed. I don't think I'm going to need to airbrush the actual legs. I've um, just got them on for convenient painting. Mainly, the airbrushing is going to be the sack <laughs> and uh, this particular gun. Not the gun, the actual cloak. Yeah, I'll get it right eventually. So I've stopped drinking, put my teeth in. <laughs> we're going to get cracking. So I think the first thing that we're going to be actually doing is the red. So the red on this one is quite a vibrant colour, which is why I've painted it uh, a nice undercoat. I think we're going to be going, not straight with the feasting red, I'm going to be hitting it with uh, the corn red, and then I'll layer it up from there. So let's get cracking. So... Let's begin, we've got some corn red, water down a little bit, and we're just going to apply it nice and even onto the coat. Alright, so I've done the hat, as well as doing the cloak. As you can see, that grey is making that corn red. Quite a bright colour, which is what we want. I'm going to put the corn red back and we're going to have the next paint. Next colour, Evil Sun Scarlet. I've got it loaded already. And what we're going to do, take that out of the way, don't want me being damaged. We're going to just try and get it from an angle. So if you guys can see that, I'm hoping you can. And start applying the red from one direction and that should give us some lovely transitions so red should be done there we are that might be a bit too bright now Ugh, focus is not my friend today uh, but the reds have been done on that and the hat. And we're going to now look at doing the Santa sack full of grenades. Mm. So, I'm going to start by covering that into land sand. Next up, we're going to hit it with Carrick Stone. And again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to hit it from an angle just to try and catch everything on a highlight. I'm hoping you can see this because I might have to change the camera angle on a lot of these in future. So hopefully you guys can see that transition. And that will be the end of my dry brushing. So if you wanted to follow this by paint, and you can do. Apologies for the white light. Come on. No. It'll focus eventually and get rid of it. Christ. Oh, I'm having so many problems today, guys. Never mind. Right. Let's uh, let's get on to some brushwork. So, here we have the actual base. This is what I'm going to start brushing first. Spread it black. And on the packet, I'm going to, I'm going to follow it quite closely. We've got a very... Look at it from there. We've got a greeny um, case with a brown case next to it, of course, with some silver striping. 
it should be quite easy to do so we're just going to yeah we're going to do that <laughs> now what we're going to do is to use some calliston green uh to try and get this and then we're going to layer it up with some wet palleting um you can always do it with some thinning of um your normal paints um to get up to an edge highlighting so Calston Green, I know I've already started, but I forgot to press play, record, sorry, and uh, I thinned it down a little bit, but you are going to have to give, you should always, to be honest with you, give majority of your paints to, you should do a Duncan, two thin coats, and I'm just using my wet palette as a way of achieving the thinner paint look I know you're not really going to see that but I'm still going to paint it in so while I'm waiting for the castle and green to dry so I can put on the second coat I'm going to use some more fang brown and paint the wood panelling on this base and make sure it's nice and secure with my bluey tack again thin coats Multiple if you need to. Okay, so we're going to be looking now at doing some shades. We've got that base coated, this one base coated with an airbrush, this one base coated with an airbrush, this one base coated with an airbrush. So I'm going to look at shading the uh, colours that I've done with a recess shade and then sort of like highlighting them. Some of them, though, like the actual backpack, I've got the wrong colour out because I'm an idiot. Uh, I'm going to do an all over shade with some watered down, well I'm saying watered down, I'm actually going to use Floor Improver. So I'm going to put that, bit of Floor Improver, I'll just screw the top off, sorry. Um, and then Seraph and Sepia, and we're going to kind of go through like a 50-50 mix. So one like that, and I should have done that the other way around because I'm an idiot. Learn from my mistakes kids. I need to know where I'm dipping to. There we go. I'll probably. Yeah, actually, that should be quite fine. And then I'm going to put this all over the backpack. And that should just sit into some of the recesses for me. Nicely. So I'm going to be doing this section. I've got Corellia Green Shade, two parts with a mix of one part Floor Improver. And I'm just going to go into the recesses. Now you might need to do this twice, but it's going to give you a nice subtle change difference. Because if you're not that good at recess shading, like sometimes I sometimes mess up, and then uh, this helps it helps a lot i'm just going to go around that sealed edge oh my blue tech game is not on point today while we're waiting for that little bit to dry let's get some Agrax oh shit and this one's gonna go I'm just gonna put this one straight neat onto the brown now I'm gonna do the red so some cowberg crimson one and a half to one so we're still sort of yeah making sure that the shades are nice and Okay, and I'm going to use a slightly thicker brush this time. I'm using a Games Workshop base. And we're just caressing some recesses gently. I don't want to distract or take away from too much of the airbrush work that we've already done. What we're doing is just 
emphasising the work that we've done. And while that's like that, I should really clean that brush, but I'll get to it in a minute. I've got a really thin brush, and I'm just putting a bit of it into certain sections. I'm just following little like them little lines in his back. Now I'm going to use a little tyrant scroll as a dry brush on these two. I'm just going to try and get the edge. I'm not after anything else on this base. And yes, I'm putting it both on the green and the brown. Hopefully you can see that, it actually looks quite good. So after that time at school, I'm going to get some Troll Slayer Orange and we're going to do a little dry brush on the red. Again, we're going to try and edge it and we're going to use a very small dry brush. I'm just needing this just to pick certain things out in the red. I'm not wanting it to overpower. I'm probably going to edge highlight in a moment with it as well. That will be in a minute. What I'm looking for is um, transitions only airbrushing and dry brushing get you. Just be careful though when dry brushing on top of airbrushed surfaces, airbrushing is a lot lot thinner sometimes you can wear it off when you don't mean to troll slayer orange thinned off in my wet palette just gently touching some of those extreme edges So next on the agenda, we're going to be doing the silver. So we've got silver straps on this. And we have the gun and his bullets on here. So the straps is probably the best one to do first. But effectively, I'm going to be using a small base brush. I'm just applying it neat from the bottle this time. Got my silver on, on my base and on there. So we're just going to wash the silver in known oil. Now, while we're waiting for that known oil to dry, it's only a little bit, but still going to wait for it to dry. This should now be dry as well. Uh, this will take a longer time because, of course, we actually did the lamp, you know, we put the floor improver on there. Um, so what we're going to do now is actually use your shabty bone. And I'm going to do a very light dry brush. Just across where any edges and detail would exist. Now while we've got the Ushabti bone out, after we've just done that little bit of dry brush, I'm going to get a tiny bit of it, and we're going to do this loincloth type thing. And we're just going to put it straight on, I'm not going to thin it down. Using a small base brush, I'm just going to make sure that all of that is covered. Don't forget that majority of that you're not going to be able to see because of the cloak. So don't don't think you've got to do it all. We are not wanting to take forever to do this. So I've got that on. I'm now just going to mix white scar and your shabty bone on a wet palette and just layer it over the top. Any more white. To a very thin mix. I'm 
So while we've got that little bit, remember to try and take it to as white as you can. Uh, drying, that should have dried. We're gonna get this little fin brush, get some Moonfang steel. Just gonna use a normal palette rather than my wet palette. I'm sure mine never mixes properly. I'm just gonna edge highlight the silver. So, Moonfang steel applied to the silver. That's kind of dry and I've also gone ahead and painted the boots belt and belt buckle black. So we're going to highlight that. All it's going to be is some Dawnstone. Just thin down and just applied like edge highlighting. We've got a little tiny grey highlight applied to the boots. We're going to hit some Seraphine Sepia. All over that, and that will take the white down to the colour after. Now, yeah, that's drying. Eyes are done on that guy simply because I did the black. I'm now going to try and paint this Christmas tree. So, this Christmas tree on the box. Quite a brightish colour, so I'm going to start with a scrag brown. I'm calling it a Christmas tree, it's just a tree. Scrag brown is quite a thin paint, so I'm just going to put it straight from the pot, making sure to not get any on that star. Although I've not painted any of the green yet, so. Currently, if you do get it on the hand or you do get it on even a little bit of fur, because we're going to be going back over that, it won't matter too much. And you'll have to put on two coats to get an even coat of this. So now with the brown, I'm just going to, a palette just to thin it down, I'm just going to put some more shabty bone on. I'm going to try and make it into the similar pattern that what you've got on the box. So I'm just going to follow it. It should already be there, but for some reason I don't think the plastic's not cracking. So. So. Sorry, get that back in. That should be about dry. And while we're waiting for that to dry, I painted some grenades green. Um, I painted them old school colours, uh, we've got Warpstone Glow on them. So both of these two, I'm going to be applying shades. So I'm going to put Agrax Surf Shade all over the brown that I've done. I want you to cover it. And then the green is going to be Coelia Green Shade. And as usual, that's covered, that's covered, these are now drying. We're going to coat the end of this gun. And we're going to use Administratum Grey. I'm starting to realise I need a fresh wet palette. Thin down. I'm just going to need several wears. Just being as careful as you can. Be neat. Not too crazy. In the meantime, I've used Dark Angel Green. I'm not quite sure what the modern colour is. I'll find it out for you. Uh, Dark Angel Green on the um, sort of branches. I'm going to be highlighting them, but in a moment I'm going to run some thinned white scar um, over the actual gun. Just trying to leave that recessed detail. This will need a couple of coats. So on the green branch, we're going to get a really thin brush. I'm going to get some more warp stone, warp stone glow, and we're going to pick out bits of the branches. And then extreme tips. 
with some moot green. All of them just pick a couple out. Again, I'm using both of these colours straight from the pot. And while I've got the moot green out, I'm just going to pick out some little bits on the grenades. Right, so grenades uh, done if you can see them. Yeah. So, we need to get all of this recoated in grace here. So, that's what we're going to do next. So, I've got my items. Done up with the uh, Gracie. I had two two coats, but majority, that's what you have to do majority of the time anyway to get a solid colour. Right, oak flesh. So yes, I am doing some contrast painting on this. I've got a, an old-ish basin brush. I'm going to put as much on as I can without ruining some of the other areas I need to put contrast on. And now some contrast white. Now, I'm using this contrast white mainly because of a cloak. So I'm going to apply it quite heavy. And I'm hoping that this nice bit of shade, this greyish colour, will now sit into the fur recesses. So, allowing the white to dry, which will give me a nice grey mottly effect on that. And of course on the beard. I'm probably going to come back to the beard and dry brush some white into that. We're going to leave the grey. The greens are looking alright. I might do some edge highlighting once it's fully dry. While I'm waiting for that to dry, we're going to do something special for the stars. We've got three stars. We've got one on there, one on there, and one up there. So, we're actually going to paint them with Cassandra Yellow shade paint. Well, I'm saying paint. It's a wash or an ink. I'm hoping this is alright. This is quite an old one. Yep, should still be fine. Excuse me. I've just burped. Just so folks know as well, I actually use Nasdrag yellow on that little... That's a contrast paint. And then, all over this. So, when we're done on that is dry, we're actually going to go back and highlight that. In the meantime, all these little wires on that branch, because we're still waiting for lots of stuff to dry. So every time I'm waiting for something to dry, painting something else, I'm going to hit that we uh, Dark Reaper. So again, waiting for stuff to actually... Sorry. I need to get this sorted. Waiting for stuff to actually uh, dry... We're going to start pre-basing some areas. So, all the snow that's on here, all the ground as it were, I'm going to cover in administratum grey. And all the baubles, I don't really need doing, but the baubles on his ear and on there, we're going to paint that with Abaddon Black. So, I'm just going to do that and bring it in. So, sometimes I do this, but I've gone on a little bit. I've actually put some... Um, of thrown grey, just stippled it on to the snow base. And what I'm going to do now with these baubles that are black, I'm going to put a little bit of mystic white. So this is from Green Stuff World. This is a metallic white. I'm just going to dab some on there. And we're not going to put it all over the black. What we're going to do is to just do it in a direction. So this one is going to be there. You might need to just put it on a bit thick and just do it in one direction. Of 
Oh yes, the bass. <laughs> I'm thinking where the hell is my third one? It's there. Right. There you go. Now that will take a while to dry because it is quite an odd paint. It's normally an airbrush paint. But it will work. Sorry if you can't see this, can you? There we are. But it will work on smaller things. The reason we've done the black is to give it the base. And then once that is done, so that's drying. Let's move on to finishing off this gun and the stars. So, these stars. Right, we're going to get a very thin brush, but we're going to get some white, well, we're going to get some white scar. Put it down as wet powder. We're going to get some extra water. We're actually going to make it quite thin. That might be too thin. Maybe I'll do it again. Maybe not. But <laughs> what I want is a very thin layer of white. I'm just going to drop my brush. So all I'm doing is just putting this on top. The majority of yellow should still show through, but we're just going to give it a bit, a bit of an odd highlight. And just on the point. Apologies if you can hear my belly. And do it to the mini version. Not really needing as much, it's kind of just a. It's kind of like you're just putting like a white glaze over the top. And it will dry pretty quick. So you just get a little bit more and just do a bit more towards the centre. Oh, and yeah, while you got your white out, put a bit of a dry brush on that beard. Next step, candy stripes on this. Now this, <laughs> I'm going to hate this because I'm probably going to mess this up, if I'm perfectly honest. But, get your finished brush. I've got some corn red to start with. Get everything else out of the way. Brace yourself and make a very thin red line. I'm doing it from the wet palette so it runs nice and smooth. And you can always thicken it up from there. And then rinse, repeat. This might take me a while. So we've got this little candy stripe. <laughs> I'm gonna leave that at that. I've tried correcting it several times. Right, so. We're gonna use another Green Stuff World product. Candy ink. We're going to paint the baubles with it. This stuff really needs shaking. Like, lots. So I'm going to use my medium shade brush for this. And basically, heavily hit those baubles. You might have to, you're going to have to do this several times. It's very similar to how I did the uh, Space Marine armor. So still waiting for some of the bauble bits to dry. I've gone and painted that with the Contrast um, Gracia. It is my favorite one to use. I've now got the Contrast Red. This should make it look very different to the actual cloak, yeah. Bit more pinky. Because it's an atmosphere style, you know, 
Tom and Jerry style. So I don't want to make it look too like its original counterpart. And then for the stem, we're just going to get some Griff Charge Grey and put that on there as well. Contrast paints can speed up your painting. They can be really, really good for the little things. I'll just knock something over. The little bits sometimes that you forget or you just don't have time for. One of the final things to do on the head, we've got to paint these lenses. I'm just going to be using some Neptunus Blue from Green Stuff World. Another one of their awesome paints. And I'm just going to dot the eyes in. Right then, ladies and gents, I've glued him together. Ooh, I've also put a little bit of uh, it's Darko Flesh with a very small brush just onto the base, onto the uh, little tabard, and that makes it look like it's. Um, yeah, it makes it look like it's some form of script writing. I was going to try to do the teeth, but it's not going to work for me. Now, that ain't finished because it's out of shot. <laughs> I've got my gloves on because I've not varnished it yet. And I don't want to rub the um, paint off because, of course, some of it's airbrush paint with the oils in my hands. So, we're going to add some proper snow. Let's get rid of those, get out the spatula. Now I'm going to use this end just to scoop a little bit. In fact, use this more bigger scoop end to put some there, which will be very easy then for me to manipulate a lot easier. And I'm going to put some proper snow on the actual base. I'm going to try and cover the majority of this in the snow. That's why I didn't go too uh, crazy with the highlight. There we go. Focus. Thank you. And you know what, guys? I've done all that and I've realised I ain't done his teeth. Okay, correction. I've done my teeth. So I'm going to put some uh, glaze on the baubles and then we're going to varnish it and then we're going to be done. Woohoo! So, it's kind of done. Woohoo! Don't look too bad that. I might have missed it. I'll go back and do a little bit more. But, uh, yeah. That's not bad. Not a bad version. Never going to get it as, uh, I'm not an heavy metal painter, so I'm never going to get it that great. But I haven't done a bad job. Uh, commission will be pleased. Well, thank you very much for watching, guys. Please like, share, subscribe, hit that notification button if you want to see more. Have a good Christmas. I'll probably say that in the next couple of videos. This should be going out on um, Saturday, just before. This will be the last day of November when this gets released. As long as I can get all my PC, because I left it in my missus's house. Uh, <laughs> while, I'm, while I'm recording this. Uh, and we will see you next time.